discusses what we call anatomical position. This is the basis of all movement and all descriptive terminology. Make sure you get this down before you move on to anything else. This is crucial to understanding what's being said and making sure you're writing things appropriately or saying things appropriately. So with this, make sure that you are in this position. I'll stand in front of the words and say them so you can see the picture uh, as well as see me uh, demonstrate it. Stand with your legs slightly abducted, which you probably cannot see me doing right now, so I wanted to zoom in a little bit. But if you notice, slides are a, uh, legs are abducted slightly, slightly apart. With your feet slightly apart, your arms slightly abducted or slightly apart. And then palms turn forward, what we call supinated, facing forward. So again, anatomical position. If you put yourself or a patient in anatomical position, this is what you describe everything from. Whether we're standing that way or not, or sitting that way, whatever it is, everything is described from this position. So, standing erect, legs slightly abducted, legs slightly apart, arms slightly abducted, slightly apart, palms facing forward, what we call supinated, facing forward, in other words, looking forward, head square on shoulders. This is anatomical position. Try it a couple of times, put yourself in this position. Put somebody else in this position. Put your spouse, a friend, uh, anyone in this position and say the terms out loud. Make sure you have them down very well before going on. The next thing we'll look at is some of the descriptive terminology. Again, go back to anatomical position when, when looking at this terminology. It's all described as if you are standing with your legs slightly abducted, arms slightly abducted, palms supinated, and facing forward. The first thing we'll look at is superior versus inferior. Super, remember, if you go back to chapter 1 uh, and into chapter 2, we have what we call the appendicular skeleton and the axial skeleton. Appendicular skeleton are your arms and legs, what we call the extremities. Axial is your head and trunk. Superior and inferior typically are always used and properly used when dealing with trunk, chest, and head. So my head is superior to my heart. And I'm saying that my head is above my heart in anatomical position. Or conversely, the opposite way, my belly button, my navel, is inferior to my neck. So that's inferior and superior. The second one is anterior and posterior. Anterior, if you're looking at me from the side, anterior is toward the front. So my left hand is anterior to my chest right now. Anterior is toward the front, posterior is toward the back. Looking at proximal and distal, that will go with the extremities. Distal is furthest away from the point of attachment. If you look at my right shoulder, my right arm, the point of attachment is my shoulder to the appendicular skeleton, to the axial skeleton. When looking at it, you would say my ring finger is distal to my elbow. Or you might say my bicep, bicep muscle is proximal to my thumb. Another term. Superficial versus deep. We'll come back to medial and lateral. I skipped over that. Superficial versus deep. Superficial is toward the surface. Deep is inside. So my skin on my stomach is superficial to the stomach itself. Or you could say my heart is deep to my ribs. It lies beneath the ribs. Medial and lateral. Medial is toward the midline. If you think of, if you divide me into perfectly right and left halves, we call that a mid sagittal line. Perfect right and left halves of the body. And looking at perfect right and left halves, anything toward that midline is medial. Anything away from the midline is lateral. So I would say my hand is lateral to my appendix, which is right here. Medial is toward the midline. When we get to movements, we will use medial and lateral quite a bit in defining some movements. That midline, that mid sagittal line, it divides me into perfect right and left halves, uh, comes into play there. The other thing we'll look at is referring to sagittal, we just talked about mid-sagittal, transverse, frontal, and oblique. You may have some texts that use coronal instead of frontal, and that's fine. We call these planes. When we get into movements, 
we will come back to a plane of movement and axis of movement uh, and review this again, but this is the first introduction of this. Think of a plane as this. And this is a ceiling tile. And what I'm going to do is use it to describe the planes with. So the first thing I'm going to do is we'll do a sagittal plane. Mid-sagittal, remember, divides the body into perfect right and left halves. A sagittal plane, put my left arm in anatomical position, could divide it into left and right halves. So a sagittal is dividing anything into right and left halves. Mid-sagittal is the complete body into perfectly right and left half portions. Transverse plane, some people may call this a horizontal plane. Think of it as a tabletop. So if we take this and turn it this way, transverse plane divides into upper and lower portions. And when we come to movements, the movements will take place in a plane, so it's important to get these planes down now. So transverse plane, upper and, left, upper and lower portions. Sagittal plane, any part into right and left portions. Mid-sagittal is the entire body, right through the nose, right through the navel, into right and left halves, perfectly even portions. Frontal plane, think of looking at me from the side. You take a take my uh, ceiling tile here and divide me into front and back halves. So if you look at it, a frontal plane is dividing the front and back halves. Oblique is a little bit different. Uh, we will use it some more in descriptive of uh, describing something on the body, not so much as in movements until you get into some advanced courses, uh, even beyond some of the kinesiology. But oblique plane is you divide me in a like diagonal, so you look at it a little bit diagonally, and you divide it diagonally. And that's an oblique plane. So to review, starting with superior and inferior. Superior is toward the head. Inferior is toward the feet, toward the abdomen. Anterior and posterior. Anterior means toward the front of the body. Posterior toward the back of the body. Medial and lateral. If you take the mid side of your line, divide me into right and left halves. Anything toward that midline, toward the buttons going up and down my shirt, is medial. Lateral is moving away from that, or a point away from it. It's lateral to it. Proximal and distal. Proximal is closer to the point of attachment, which would be my shoulders, the most proximal portion of the arm. Distal is furthest part away, so the tip of my middle finger is most distal of my right arm. And then superficial versus deep. With superficial, you're looking at toward the surface, deep, inner. So think of your stomach being deep to your skin. And then looking at the uh, planes. Sagittal plane divides anything in the right and left half. It could be an arm, could be just my head, could be just a leg. Mid-sagittal is the entire body in the right and left halves. And then transverse divides me into upper and lower portions. Frontal divides me into front and back halves of the body. Think of an anterior half and a posterior half to use the terminology. Oblique divides me, it divides diagonally. Uh, which we will probably not use very much in this course, just know it as a term. So again, everything is from anatomical position. Again, anatomical position is standing with arms slightly abducted, legs slightly abducted, palms forward or supinated, facing forward with head square on shoulder. Make sure you have this terminology down, practice this terminology. Your next slide will allow you to practice it. Once you practice the terminology on that slide, then go on to the next one after that for the answers. On the slide, think of it this way. If I say, my wedding band is point A, right here, and my watch is point B, what is B with respect to A? How, if I'm standing on A, how do I get to B? I move proximal on that extremity. If, point at your belly button, if that's point A, and my ear is point B, my right ear, what is A with respect to B? So if I'm standing on A, 
How do I get to B? How would you walk to B? You would walk superior and then you would walk lateral. So it's superior and lateral. That's how you will use that terminology practice page. Practice that a few times, use all the different terms, use the different parts of the body, do things on the legs, do things on the arms, uh, do things on the trunk, do things on the head. Uh, make sure you use all the terminology. When you think superficial and deep, if I say my heart is point A and my spine is point B, the spine directly behind the heart. So I have my spine and I have my heart. If you're looking at it from the side. A, B. What is A with respect to B? So if I'm standing on B, I'm standing on my spine, how would I get to my heart? I would go move superficial and anterior. You can use either one there. Uh, either one would be appropriate.